In this video I will show and discuss every single game in the real-time tactics stealth genre that has ever existed and all the upcoming games that have been clearly announced. You may ask, really? How can you be sure you found every single game? Well, I have spent considerable amount of time researching, but you can try and prove me wrong if you want. There are 17 Commandos likes in existence, 2 remasters and 7 upcoming games officially in production. I dare you to try and find something I've missed. But before all three of you Stray Commandos fans that found this video go all aha and make a jump for the comment section, first let's lay some groundwork. After all I, I don't want you to ask, oh but where is the Star Trek Away team? Like I didn't know this game exists? It's not on the list because it doesn't match the criteria. Science, baby! So, what are the Commandos clones? The genre as we know it has been defined all the way back in 1998. I was way too young then to slit Nazi throats and I wouldn't have a PC until uh, four years later, so I have experienced this jam long after its release. But a gem it was, for the time at least. Commandos Behind Enemy Lines is a very simple and focused game. It has introduced what I'll call the Five Commandments, or the Five Commandos Ments. Right. 1. You shall view the world from up above. The isometric perspective helps give player all the necessary visual info where the enemies are, what they are looking at, and how many there are. Compared to your standard stealth game, to have this much data at your fingertips seems almost like cheating. But you will need all of that. You will need that. 2. You shall lead a team of specialized operatives. In Commandos 1 you have 6 guys under your command. Green Beret, Sniper, Marine, Sapper, Driver and Spy. Each of them has different talents. Using and combining their individual skills is key to success. 3. You shall be quiet as a whisper. Stealth is key. The enemies have the numbers and can easily overpower you. But you have the wit, the knife and the ability to drag bodies to a ditch and pile them endlessly. To achieve mission objectives you can quietly slit every single Nazi throat on the entire map. Typically these games won't guilt trip you into non-lethal options. 4. You shall sense the enemy vision in the form of a colorful cone. Yes, precisely timed sneaking requires clear visual feedback. How far can the Nazi guard see if I stand behind this bush? Will they notice me? The vision cones solve that issue elegantly. 5. You shall abuse quicksave mercilessly. The game can fuck you over so much that it is only fair to put such a powerful weapon in your hands. Okay, them's the rules, them's the commandments the Commandos Smets, if you will. So how does Commandos fare in 2022? Um, it's rough. The AI responses are inconsistent, though mostly stupid. The response time is null. There is often not even a second delay between a guard seeing you and the same guard filling your ass full of lead. The balance of character skills leaves some room for improvement. We will complete 80% of the game with Green Beret alone, his knife and decoy are that OP. Driver is usually singled out as the most superfluous, though I prefer him to the Sniper. Sniper can pick up 3 or 4 guys per map on average and that's it, while Driver gets to have his moment whenever there's a tank on the map. When you don't have a tank though, the punishment for breaking stealth is severe. Fuck up just once and you'll see dozens of machine gun wielding bastards flooding out of every building marked with a flag. Might as well just quick load already. You won't see anything this raw and sadistic made today. And even in 1998 the Commando series was known for its high difficulty. 
But if you embrace the trial and error nature of this whole ordeal, you'll be good. And it's the kind of trial and error that I personally find strangely soothing. You cannot lose progress if you abuse the quick save button and so you can experiment to your heart's content. Unfortunately I'm quite sure that some of the later maps cannot even be completed without raising alarm. Fortunately, you can always cheese the AI by railroading them one way and popping their heads one by one. Not proud of it, but I do what I gotta do. Did I say Commandos 1 was hard? Commandos Beyond the Call of Duty came out not even one whole year later, in 1999. And it is basically Commandos 1.5, a standalone expansion pack with 8 huge maps. It added some new features such as throwable stones, ability to knock out and handcuff enemies, etc. etc. It has also seen the first appearance of World War II's most dangerous weapon, a pack of cigarettes. We'll get to that later. The maps are improved, they look much more distinct and cool and often include some fun gimmicks. For example, on this map, you have to sneak into a zoo through a lion cage. Nice! There is one significant drawback. Commandos Beyond the Call of Duty is even more sadistic than Commandos 1. So much so that I gave up halfway through it twice. Maybe I'll finish it one day, I don't know. But last time I tried I got scared off by the very first map. It's hard to even step off the damn boat that you start in, not to mention that in order to destroy all the objectives you will have to ration your explosives in a way that's almost like a puzzle. Ugh. Okay, I bet you've never heard about this one, unless you're Chinese. I've never played it, and there's barely any info about it in English. I found this gameplay on YouTube and a Wikipedia entry in Chinese so you can check them out if you're curious. The mission 1937 apparently takes place during Second Sino-Japanese War. It came out three years after the original Commandos and it looks like a pain if I'm honest. If any Chinese gamer ever comes across this video, please leave me a comment. I want to know if this game was in any way notable in China. Now, here's where the fun begins. Desperados Wanted Dead or Alive has aged quite gracefully. Its art design is very endearing. The characters really come to life despite being just a bunch of western stereotypes. The story is sufficient for that type of game. And the levels are gorgeous, filled with clever designs and cool gimmicks. You can cut off a bale of hay to kill this guy. You can crawl in corn or high grass to get a drop on those lousy cowboys. You can shoot a guy with a poisoned blowpipe dart to get him to hallucinate and shoot up his buddies. You can put a snake near a doorway or a ladder. You can punch a priest. Sweet. There is one stereotypical Mexican character that would not be written like that in 2022, but he looks so much like Fernando Sancho from old spaghetti westerns that I could almost forgive that. Desperados is also the first game in the genre to introduce the ability to synchronize two or more actions. You hit this clock button, you set your characters to do one action each, you confirm and you watch. Cool. Not gonna spoil it, but the game ends with a boss fight. If you're wondering how you can pull off a legit boss fight in the real-time tactics stealth genre, you just play this 20-year-old sadistically designed game and find out. Oh yeah, and it is difficult. Overall more forgiving than Commandos, but nowhere near easy. I think only about one or two maps are virtually impossible to complete with full stealth. Other than that, it's butt-clenchingly hard, but doable. Pyro Studios must have had a tough time following up Commandos. The game was popular at the time and developed a cult following since, but it was also a relatively simple concept which came out rough around the edges. They could either do the same game a third time and polish it more, or make some significant iterations. They decided to go crazy with it. Commandos 2 Man of Courage is one of the most overly ambitious games I have played in my life, 
and I love every second of it. In the beginning you might feel familiar, but as soon as you hit Boot Camp Mission 2, you will be in serious trouble. There are so many mechanics here, it boggles the mind, and the tutorials are not there at all. You need to read the 40 or 50 page long manual to get a grasp of how to play this, otherwise how would you know that you can right click on one of the item icons to view more items in the same category? How would you know that you can hold ALT and click with your mouse to rotate the camera? Yes, rotate the camera in 2D. Yeah, it rotates by 90 degrees and it's a bit disorienting at first, but you will get used to it. How would you know that you can open a door by holding SHIFT and clicking on it? What? You can enter buildings in this game? Yeah, so up until now most stealth tactics games only allowed you to explore outside, with maybe a few buildings you could look inside. But in Commandos 2 you can enter a 3 or 4 story building and visit every floor and every room. Some of them are interconnected in such ways that you will get lost. See map 9, Castle called it. It's almost like a maze. Commandos 2 is the first and last game in the genre that evokes a sense of wonder in exploration. I wanted to inspect every nook and cranny, especially given that there are collectibles, and unlike useless collectibles of the current age, these are really cool. On each map, you can gather several pieces of a torn photograph. If you get them all, after the mission is complete, you will play a bonus level. Some of these bonus levels are pretty cool, and one of them even has my favorite moment in the entire genre. It is at the end of map 8, only accessible if you find all collectibles. You get a bunch of soldiers under your command, and you have to prepare for a Saving Private Ryan inspired small town invasion. So you set your guys around the house facing all directions, making sure their view cones cover the widest possible area, you set the mines, you find a good sniping spot, and you click the Begin Siege button. If you've done well, you can now sit back and enjoy your guys killing everyone. If you fucked up, you can watch all hell break loose and try to react in real time. Awesome! The game is rich with possibilities. Who knew you could tie bed sheets together in Castle Colditz to climb out a window? Why would anyone do that? I don't know, but you certainly can. You can also use this fish bait to get yourself surrounded by a bunch of fish, so that you can use them as cover and sneak up upon one of those irritating Japanese divers. Or you could just rush them and shoot them. See, that's the main design flaw in Commandos 2. You can do all this awesome stuff on all of these beautiful maps, but ultimately there is always this one other strategy that proves 99.5% effective and is a lot easier to pull off. Throwing a pack of cigarettes is always the easiest solution to any problem. You can use cigarettes to lure guards away from their posts and then comfortably slit their throats when nobody is looking. You can play the entire game like that, robbing yourself of the great many details, just because it's so easy. So to appreciate the genius that is Commandos 2, you must fight against your baser instincts. A year after Commandos 2, Spellbound, the creators of Desperados, came back with another Commandos clone. This time they drew from the Robin Hood mythos. A good choice, if you ask me. Real-time tactics stealth games work especially well in low-tech settings. Anything closer to modern day and you have to really squirm to explain why the sniper only has three bullets on him and why nobody thought to bring a silenced pistol for the mission. Even though you have no guns at all, Robin Hood is the easiest game in the genre. Your characters can fend for themselves. If you leave them alone and they're spotted, they'll put up a decent fight. Maintaining constant stealth isn't really as important here because you're way too powerful to even care. However, the game is at its best when you get into the rhythm of ambushing small groups of enemies in creative and fun ways, so it's not like stealth is an afterthought either. The main draw of Robin Hood The Legend of Sherwood is that it experiments quite a bit. 
You get a central hub where you can craft items and train your team. You can recruit more NPCs depending on your moral standing. The higher your kill count, the more reluctant the candidates are. You can choose whom you take to each mission. You can choose to move on with the story or pick a side quest. There are caveats though, as the innovations don't always work. The hub is pretty barren. You don't get to have conversation with your team or do that much of anything. Leveling of your characters is poorly explained. The recruits join you at such a rate that you won't care about your kill count for long. Also, all the recruits are good for in the second half of the game is farming arrows, as they are easily outclassed in combat by main characters. You don't get any intel before missions, so you don't know whom to take with you so you'll likely default to your strongest characters and that's it. Side quests are boring, you won't do them for long, at least until you're forced to do them, because you need money to progress in the story. The game won't even tell you that directly, instead it will trap you in those repetitive side quests for hours, slowly grinding towards the required sum. And believe me, the cash trickles slow. The repetitiveness is made worse by the fact that all side quests take place on three very small maps. The main missions also partake in shameless recycling. If I remember correctly there are four maps. That gives us seven maps total for the entire game. That is not great. A decent game overall, but clearly unfinished. Speaking of unfinished, Commandos 3 came out in 2003 and it was definitely unfinished. It's just a dumbed down, shorter and less polished version of Commandos 2. Whoa there, I hear you say, less polished than Commandos 2? But you've called that game a glorious mess. Indeed, Commandos 3 is Commandos 2 with the ambition surgically removed. That is, you can see some traces of ambition, but it seems like somebody rolled over the entire game with a plow track and removed at least 60% of the intended content. Yes. The mechanics are the same, so it's almost like an expansion pack with one notable change. Someone remapped all keyboard shortcuts in such a way that you will never want to use them again. You can install a patch though, it's included in the GOG release. The formula has changed a little too. Commandos 2 was all about huge, eye-pleasing maps with tons of content, and Commandos 3 is faster, more snappy, divided into bite-sized chunks. The level design reminds me of the Commandos 2 bonus levels, as some maps here are downright experimental. A sniper duel, yeah, cool, but it barely works. A mission with a time limit, uh, not great. Storming a beach in Normandy with a one-man army of Green Beret? Um, sure, whatever. A train level? Yeah, I can't fault them for this one, it's pretty great. Most levels are short or feel rushed. One highlight is the Berlin map, which is one of the best in the series in my opinion. C+, go home now, Commandos 3. I have tried to run Korea Forgotten Conflict on three different PCs, and it has never worked for me. Apparently a Czech game about American war in Korea, this released soon after Commandos 3 in 2003. Today it is basically abandonware. You can't buy it. As far as I can tell, nobody cares or remembers about this game. Looking at gameplay videos online, I guess it's probably for good reasons. This looks only slightly more playable than Mission 1937. If you're Czech and you have any memories or trivia about Korea Forgotten Conflict, please write me a comment. Yeah, so Spellbound was not doing so good financially. You can see issues with Robin Hood already, but Chicago 1930 is one step further. It's a very meh game, which I have not finished yet. As far as I've noticed, there's barely any reason to maintain stealth. It looks bland and boring, the characters are generic nobodies. Maybe I'll revise my opinion once I finish it, but don't hold your breath. Remember how 10 seconds ago I said Spellbound was in trouble? Well, two years passed since Chicago 1930, 
the genre all but dried up, and the next entry has been produced once again by Spellbound. Unfortunately, it's very clear that they were on their last legs. Cooper's Revenge is maybe the most broken game I've ever played to completion in my entire life. And I'm not talking about bugs or technical issues, just design. Immediately upon playing Cooper's Revenge, you will notice two things. One, the game is incredibly, mind-bogglingly slow. Every action takes forever to complete, and you are trapped watching Cooper as he laboriously drags dead bodies into hiding. This on its own is enough to stop most people from playing past the first two levels. And then, two, for some ungodly reason, Spellbound decided to add the option to view everything in third-person mode. These two modes of play don't gel at all. The genre is clearly well fitted for top-down or isometric perspective. Third-person mode only manages to expose the artifice behind the stealth tactics gameplay. I was sure I would ignore it completely, as it seemed useful only for a more action-heavy approach. But oh wait! In the third map, I can only use Doc, who barely has any stealth skills. And it's virtually impossible to progress unless I massacre everyone in the dreaded third-person mode. So that's where Desperados went, huh? Three years passed. We have not seen a good or even decent Commandos like for at least six years. The next one is again produced by Spellbound. This time they've left their publisher, lost the rights to the Desperados name and released an unofficial sequel to Cooper's Revenge under the impressively cheesy title Hell Dorado. Hell Dorado is almost a good game. Yes, it uses the same mechanics as Cooper's Revenge and is almost just as slow, but its design makes a lot more sense. They even managed to add one curious innovation. Now you can use combo actions which are performed by two specific characters. These are pretty interesting. It's a shame that the game rarely lets you use them because half the maps have a no-killing policy restriction. For long stretches of gameplay you are only allowed to use the boring skills. Would have been a pretty good commandos like if not for that. Seven years since Heldorado. Thirteen years since the last decent real-time tactics stealth game. It's not that the genre fans were starved at this point. They simply lost hope. Enter Mimimi Games, a relatively small German dev without major successful releases on record. In 2016 they released Shadow Tactics to very little fanfare. The following grew slowly, but fans eventually got there. I think I found out about it a year after the release. When I realized what I'm looking at, I bought it immediately and was in absolute awe. This thought simmered in my mind for years, and today I can say with confidence, Shadow Tactics is my favorite game in the genre. It's fast-paced, for a stealth game at least, finely crafted, tightly designed, good-looking, and what have you. Definitely has the most engaging story of all the games in this video, with a surprisingly emotional twist at the end of the second act. Nothing mind-blowing, but a nice bit of context to a game that could have easily gotten away with no story at all. All the mechanics are known from previous titles, with perhaps the most influence taken from the original Desperados, but they work here just perfectly. The synchronized actions are immensely satisfying, the AI and audiovisual feedback are extremely consistent. Based on the guard's appearance, you can tell if they can be lured away from their post or if they can be killed by stabbing. Every action you can perform has a clearly defined sound range. If there's an enemy within that circle when you shoot, they're going to be alerted to your presence. Beautiful, clean, simple and ageless design cannot recommend this one enough. I don't think I need to since for many people Mimimi Mi games were the entry point to the genre. Some don't call them Commandos clones anymore but Shadow Tactics clones or Desperados 3 clones of all things. I feel bad even talking about this remaster. The discourse around it has been forever spoiled by cries of censorship. So Calypso removed a few spasticus. That's mildly concerning, but I don't care. 
What I can't accept is that they also introduced a lot of awful, terrible bugs that have never been fixed, even years after release. I do not recommend this version. Mimimi's follow-up to Shadow Tactics was, unsurprisingly, very good. Not as good as Shadow Tactics, in my opinion, which might be unfair because Shadow Tactics was not only good, it also came at the best moment, which is when I least expected it. Desperados 3 had a bunch of expectations to meet, and meet them it did, for the most part. The synchronized actions trick is significantly improved by the addition of active pause, the mechanics are further polished, the design is as good as ever, I just couldn't help but notice that the animations are a touch over long, which makes the whole game a little slower than Shadow Tactics. That's probably the main reason why I like Desperados 3 a little less, but it's still top of the line. Partisans 1941 is unfortunate, because it is a pretty bad time to be a piece of shameless Russian propaganda. You lead a group of courageous Soviet partisans to help save local townsfolk and make the Nazi war machine trip over its own shoelaces. So the way it's portrayed, you'd think that Mother Russia and good Uncle Stalin are just your cheery good friends. And it's tough to swallow, especially for someone that lives in a country next door to Ukraine. Now that we've addressed the elephant in the room, Partisans 1941 has some welcome innovations. It actually expands on the systems from Commandos 2 and Robin Hood. You have a hub, and it's good. You have stuff to do in it. You have some tactical shooting mechanics, which are superior to Commandos 2 Vision Cone system. You have RPG elements and character leveling. Oh my! Your characters have somewhat interchangeable skills, but you can assign XP to strengthen abilities of your choice. This somehow does not break the game's balance. You can choose a quiet or loud approach, and both are equally clunky, so the best way is to alternate between these two playstyles to keep the experience fresh. Not a perfect game by any means, but an ambitious one. Had it kept its politics in its pocket, I could have easily recommended it today. You have not expected this, did you? Well, look at it. Just look at it. Hey, you! Hey! A Polish game about World War II. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. See, I am Polish, and I cringe at the very thought. You probably don't know that, but Poles have their particular views on World War II, which can be summarized like this. We've been hurt by everyone. We are the poorest of the poor, and also kind of a chosen nation. Why don't you appreciate our suffering, you bastards? Yeah, so war mongrels uses that and all sort of other lousy sentiments that I don't like. War Mongrels was also developed by the creators of Hatred, so it's the edgiest World War II game you have ever seen. You even get to start an uprising in a Nazi death camp. Ugh. The story is told without subtlety, and the characters strike me as awful people. It's so bleak and dreary and devoid of humor that somehow even a nihilist like myself may find it tiresome after a while. The gameplay could save the day, and it does. Kinda. The game is decently paced, it's decently designed, most of the mechanics are borrowed from Commandos 1 and Shadow Tactics, it's pretty fun, nothing out of the ordinary. Except for bugs. When the game launched, it was so broken you could not be certain if you'll be able to finish it. They fucked up the most crucial part, the fifth Commandos meant. The save system was unreliable for weeks after the launch, and each patch made the save files from the previous versions unusable. At any time I saved, I wondered if my save is going to get corrupted or not. This has been quite a stressful experience, if I'm honest, and even though I assume they fixed most of the critical issues, I'm anxious to go back to this game. My playtime during the recording of this footage has been better, and they have released a new patched version recently, which they advertised as the Polish edition, haha, <laughs> but I am still worried. The expansion pack to Shadow Tactics came very late, but it was worth it. 
because it's more shadow tactics. They experimented a bit with some shorter and more story driven levels. Wanna see more of that in the future, thank you very much. Well, what else do you want me to say? It's good. There, I said it. Considering how bad Commandos 2 HD Remaster had been, I expected the worst. But somehow Commandos 3 HD is everything you'd want from a decent remaster. It's high resolution, high frame rate, and the updated assets gel fairly well with the old art style. The only problem here is that Commandos 3 deserved a remake rather than a remaster, it being a very flawed game that could not reach its full potential. And that's it! These were all of them, every single one. Can you find another that matches all five Commandos mens, or at least like four and a half? If so, let me know. I'm starved for more of those. There are a few upcoming releases that are worth keeping in mind. Number one on every real-time tactics stealth fans list should be the next Mimimi Mi Mi game. It does not have a name yet, just a code name. And now you need to pardon my German, Süßkartoffel. Here's what a Süßkartoffel looks like. Mimimi Mi Mi has not revealed anything apart from the genre and code name, but considering their output so far, I'm hyped. Then there is the new Commandos game that apparently has been in production for a while. The subtitle is Origins and it's being worked on by some new studio put together by Calypso. I was wary of Calypso because of their poor handling of Commandos 2 HD, but now after Commandos 3 HD I'm just confused and I don't know what to think. Not much is known, but the expectations are going to be high for the direct inheritor of the Commandos name and legacy. Then there is a cute little game called Frigato Shadows of the Caribbean. This one we know more about since there's a playable demo available on Steam. The Caribbean setting is great for this type of game, I couldn't come up with a better fit. For now you can play as two characters and have some fun on one map consisting of several layers. I find this approach interesting. I've heard in an interview with a Mimimi Mi Mi employee that commando likes can be weirdly taxing on the CPU despite simple graphics just because the game has to render the entire map all the time or something. I I assume splitting the maps into shorter and closed segments helps the dev with the optimization issues, but also I like that they're going for the tighter bite-sized approach. I wish games in this genre did that more often. The demo has good pacing and some very fun and creative ideas. You can play it at any time yourself rather than watch me try to cheese and break it for shits and giggles. Uh, I don't know if it will be even possible to play it this stupidly after they patch it more. Uh, it isn't hard and I'm actually starting to warm up to the lower difficulty level, you know. Maybe my ass was kicked one time too many. And I think you should try it. Add it to your wish list. why don't you? It's rough around the edges, sure, as you would expect from a game in progress, but the team is a bunch of sweet people from Poland who deserve your money and attention. I hear they are hard at work redesigning how the game looks. A good move. I can't help but wonder about the script and voice acting. The devs seem to work on a tight budget, and yet they're going out of their way to deliver a full story experience. That's crazy. I love it! The approach seems to be tongue-in-cheek, but the humor in the demo has not really landed for me personally. Guys, you should hire me. I'll give you a free sample, listen to this. What did the first mate see down the toilet? The captain's log! Guys, let me help punch up your dialogue, I'll work for free! The next one is kind of a mystery to me, it's titled Stone of Madness and it seems to be a Commandos-like, but the trailers are vague enough that it could actually turn out to be some kind of stealth RPG. I'm particularly worried about their approach to the fifth commandos -ment. If it is a legit stealth tactics game, I think they've taken a really original setting and art style, and I applaud them for that, I will probably be all over it when it comes out. Now, a funny thing, my mother is a major Stargate fan. I have never watched a single entire episode of Stargate in my life, but I've seen bits and pieces and I get a weird kind of second-hand nostalgia. So Stargate Timekeepers is an interesting title for me. It doesn't look bad, I can spot obvious influences from Mimi Mi style of Commando Slags, so I suppose it will be pretty simple in concept and probably not too difficult to play either. I've heard in an interview that the devs wanted to give options to players that are really bad at stealth. It's alright, I don't need a game to violently rape my nerve endings to get off. 
This game has been announced very recently, it's called First Blood Persian Legends and I cannot tell you anything more than what you can read in the Steam description. It looks kind of interesting, but also seems to be at a very early stage. I am definitely going to look this up myself. Lastly, there is a dude in Pakistan making a Commandos clone, and I mean a real Commandos clone set during World War II and all that. He is kind enough to show off his progress on YouTube, Twitter and Discord, so I was able to watch his game go from this to this. And it's in the span of just three months. It's called Red Glare. And I gotta say this, this dude is as crazy as the Frigato guys, or maybe even more. There are tanks, there are boats, there are dogs, there is fucking real-time day and night cycle, which nobody has ever done in a real-time tactics stealth game. And even though it is at a very early stage, I could already pay this guy money, because I appreciate his insanity. I assume the assets are bought off of some asset store, but to be honest, they look better than I expected. Good job. Go and follow him on Twitter or something. Guys, that's all I've got for you today. All the real-time stealth tactics games that I know of. If you know any other titles that follow the five commandos men's, let me know. There won't be any big finale, no summary, and no teary goodbyes. Just thank you. Have a good one.